This video is all about ions and their charges. The atomic number of an atom can tell us important details about the atom, which are the following. Say for example, our atom here has an atomic number of 8. The number of protons is the same with the atomic number. Now if our atomic number here is 8, that means the number of protons is equal to 8. In a neutral atom, the number of protons and the number of electrons are equal. If our atom here is neutral, the number of electrons is equal to 8. What is this thing called net charge or the charge of an atom? Net charge is defined as the comparison between the number of protons and electrons in an atom. So basically it is which is greater, protons or electrons. In our example here, the number of protons positive is equal to 8 and the number of electrons negative is equal to 8 which is greater than the other none if that is the case the net charge is equal to zero if an atom has a net charge of zero an atom is neutral in a periodic table of element there are a lot of groupings one special group probably is envied by other atoms well if they have feelings and that group is this group we call them the noble gases now what makes noble gases to be envied by other atoms again if they have feelings it is because noble gases are said to be stable and atoms want to be stable now what is the condition for an atom to become stable stability of an atom is defined by gilbert lewis using his octet rule octet rule states that an atom should be stable if it has on its outermost shell eight valence electrons let's apply that idea i have here two atoms the atom of neon and the atom of nitrogen these atoms are in their monoatomic form, meaning to say they are not combined with any other atom. Neon, on its valence shell or outermost shell, has 8 valence electrons, while nitrogen, on its outermost shell, has only 5 valence electrons. Following the octet rule, neon is a stable atom nitrogen is not since neon has eight valence electrons in its monoatomic form neon actually belongs to the noble gases nitrogen is not if nitrogen wants to be stable what can it do an atom basically has a lot of options the most common option that atoms perform or do in order to become stable is either they will get electrons that they need to complete the eight required electrons or sometimes they give their electrons how is it possible I have here an atom with an atomic number of 11 that means the number of protons is equal to 11 now if the atom this atom is neutral how many electrons will be there 11 okay the number of protons positive is 11 the number of electrons negative is 11 what will be the net charge again net charge is which subatomic particle is greater than the other in our scenario none that means the net charge is zero this atom has only one valence electron so in order for it to become stable it needs to find seven more electrons which is a lot therefore instead of looking for seven more electrons 
our atom here will simply remove its outermost electron or its valence electron. Doing that, this outermost shell has no longer electrons in it. Therefore, we can disregard that and take a look at this one. The second shell becomes the outermost shell and that outermost shell has eight valence electrons. That means our atom that lost its electron becomes stable. Now, do we have still the same set of numbers? Let's find out. Did we remove or add protons? No. So therefore, the number of protons is still the same. What about electrons? Well, a while ago we said that in order for our atom to become stable, it needs to release one electron. Therefore, our electrons is no longer equal to 11, but 10. We said a while ago that the net charge is the comparison between the protons and electrons. Which of the two is greater than the other, protons or electrons? Well, 11 is greater than 10. That means protons is greater than electrons. To show that protons is greater than electrons, we place the positive sign. Again, it denotes that protons is greater than electrons. By how many protons? One. Okay, therefore, our net charge is positive one. Since our net charge is no longer equal to zero, we can no longer say that our atom is neutral. An atom which is no longer neutral is said to be an ion. An ion is an atom with an equal number of protons and electrons. Neutral, same number of protons and electrons different number of protons and electrons or unequal numbers, we call it ion. There are two types of ions that we have, which is positive ion and negative ion. Now take a look at our example. What is the charge of our ion? Positive. If an ion has a charge of positive, we call that ion as cat ion, not cation, cation. So cation has a charge of positive. Okay, next one. Our atom here has an atomic number of 17. Let's assume that our atom is neutral. So if the atomic number is 17, the number of protons is 17. If the atom is said to be neutral, the number of electrons is also equal to 17. Hence, since they are the same, the net charge is zero. This atom will look for one more electron. So let's add an electron. So this electron will be added to our atom. And if this atom gains an electron, it will now have eight valence electrons. Now, did we change the number of protons? No. Therefore, the number of protons is still 17. What about the number of electrons? Well, we added one electron. That means, instead of 17, 18. The number of protons and electrons are no longer the same. Therefore, the net charge is no longer equal to zero. Let's find out what is now the new net charge. Which is greater than the other, protons or electrons? Obviously, 18 is greater than 17. So, since electrons are greater, we write the negative sign. By how many? One. Okay? Therefore, the net charge of our atom is negative one. Is it still a neutral atom? No. It is an ion. But what kind of ion? A while ago, our ion that bears a positive sign is called a cation. If an ion carries a negative charge, the ion is defined or called as an ion, not anion. 
an ion, okay? And an ion has a negative charge. I have here a set of atoms with the following information, the number of protons and the number of electrons. Let's use these numbers to identify the net charge and the type of ion that we have. Let's begin. For the first one, the number of protons is equal to 4, while the number of electrons is equal to 2, which is greater than the other, the protons or the electrons. Basically, it's the protons. By how many? 2 protons. So I have a net charge of positive 2. Therefore, if I have a positive charge, what type of ion do we have? Cat ion. Okay, next one. I have here 9 protons and 10 electrons, which is greater than the other electrons. By how many? 1. If I have a net charge of negative, the type of ion is an ion. Next one. Which is greater than the other? 13 protons or 10 electrons? Protons. By how many? 3. And therefore, we have a cat ion. Since it's positive. Last one. Which is greater than the other? The protons, 15, or the electrons, 17? It's the electrons. By how many? 2. The net charge is negative 2. Therefore, the type of ion is an ion. So that is how we can use the information for the number of protons and electrons to identify the net charge and the type of ion. If the number of protons and electrons are not the same, we don't have a neutral atom but an ion. And Ions are classified into two, cation bearing positive charge and anion carrying negative charge. And that is how you identify the type of ion, if it's a cation or anion, and the net charge of an atom. I hope you learned something in this lesson. Good luck and till the next video. Goodbye. Tell me pretty lies, look me in the face, tell me that you love me, even if it's